What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is all about loopers, and I'm going to show you a couple of ways you can get the most out of your looper in a practice session. So let's go. Cool. All plugged in now and ready to go. Rig for today is PRS Super Eagle, like usual, into the Ibanez TS9, into my loop pedal, which is a newly purchased Boss RC1, which is really, really fun so far. So now let's make a loop, have a jam, and then we'll come back and talk about ways that you can use a looper in your practice session. So let's go. Laundry's done if you hear that. <laughs> That was a fun Scarlet intro inspired jam, right? The loop being made from two parts. Part one, the chords. Right, part two being the octaves that Bobby does. making that loop, I actually used position four um, just so it had a different sound from the lead. Right. We'll get to that type of loop in a bit. So the whole point of this video is to show you guys how I use a looper when I practice to hopefully help you guys get the most out of your looping, right? I wasn't really a huge fan of loopers or really appreciated them until lockdown happened. And as you guys know, I'm not really a big fan of jamming with backing tracks. When I would practice, I would just run through changes by myself 
or make a loop depending on the length on the Strymon timeline or on Logic or Luna now. And amazingly, thankfully, now I've upgraded to the Boss RC1 so I can make longer loops. But in my progression of looping, I found that there were three ways to get the most out of the looper, right? Part one being, it's a great way to jam over one chord jams, right? Like a bird song intro, for instance. And you can really use that to your advantage to hear how every note of, in that case, the Mixolydian scale, right? Sounds with the intro progression. So let's take a quick look at that right now. So here's our loop, right? Two chords, E to D. And like part one is about playing the scale that goes over this progression, in this case being E mixolydian, and really taking note of how every note sounds over this progression, right? Obviously, birdsong inspired, but you can really see how really friendly notes are obviously root third fifth, right? The one that makes the most tension, right, is that flat seven, that D. One more time. So, a little bit of overdrive. There's that flat seven. That is use one. See how the scale you're practicing fits over a progression and to hear how every note clashes or matches with the home chords. So similar to like this past birdsong jam, we can also take a look at Scarlet, the intro part, right? And 
build up two loops like we did in the intro jam and with the same idea, play the scale, in that case, B mixolydian and hear how every note relates to the riffs that are being played, right? So for example, There's the chords. Now we'll add Bobby's parts, the octaves. Add some light overdrive. And now we can see how these B mixolydian notes work over this progression. Seven. Major third. Right flat seven. way to see how notes interact with the home tonal quality of the jam. So now let's check out part two, which is playing the changes. Cool. So playing the changes. For this example, we'll look at the progression in Althea for the solo section, right? That B minor A E. And what the looper will help us do is practice a solo that is very robotic in a way that the chord changes were obviously outlining very strictly, right? And then as you practice and improve more, then you can add more notes around this frame that you've already made, right? In my opinion, it's easier to add notes than it is to take away notes. So let's check that out right now. There's our loop. Add some light OD. Now we're going to only aim for root and third, right? skeleton, right? Once you get that under your fingers, then you can slowly add more notes, right? Oh, 
almost, but you are spelling out a B minor seven triad because you have that D, F sharp, A to B. Check it out, here it comes. that more and more and feel more confident then you can improvise more to the point where you feel really good about it so you can make a different solo every time you play the song right Practicing the changes. Very robotic at first. Less is more. Adding more notes and improving your improvising skills, right? Playing the changes. Cool. So part three, which I think is the most important part, is practicing loops to new songs that you're learning, right? As much as you feel very confident in looping over changes for songs that you already know, you have to practice songs that are still tricky for you, right? And like the saying goes, if it sounds bad, it's because you're practicing, right? Practicing isn't meant to sound perfect. It's meant to have mess ups and parts where you're confused and not sure where to go, right? And for me, even though I love the songs, my favorite songs to play, Help on the Way is still a very tricky solo for me to nail the vibe of that solo. So let's try something now. Let's go. on the way is one although it seems that i'm confident i'm very much like oh i don't know yet how to feel confident for the solo 
right? I approach it in a way that's very much like don't hit the wrong note, right? So with this looper, now that I can loop up to like two and a half minutes as opposed to my Strymon timeline that loops 30 seconds only, I hope to progress in gaining confidence and knowing much more what to do over this help on the way chord progression. So with all that being said, those are the three ways I found that can hopefully help you guys get the most of a loop pedal while practicing. Well, all right, guys, that is today's video on how you can use a looper as a really great and fun practicing tool like we saw today in those three examples. If you liked today's video, please press like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.